Alright guys, in this video, I'm going to be showcasing five good things that I really like about my Range Rover Velar after four years of using it, five things that I don't like so much after four years, and a little bit about what's next for me. If you haven't seen my one year review of the Velar, I'll leave a link in the description, make sure you check those out. Some of those things will still be the same after a year compared to now, which is four years later. I bought this in 2017 on day one when it was released, and today is the 1st of September. It's exactly four years after I bought it from the 1st of September in 2017. So I'm really excited to showcase if you're maybe trying to consider buying this car, if it's actually worth it. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so in no particular order, the first like is the design. So after having this car for four years now, I still think it's one of the best designs on the road. I still get a lot of looks, people admire it, and it's not just looking good from the outside, but it looks beautiful from the inside as well. So for me, I really can't fault the design of the Velar. Number two, the performance is really good on this car. I'm talking about how smooth it is to drive. You know, sometimes it feels like you're driving on clouds. There's a lot of bumps on the roads. There's a lot of potholes. Either way, it still goes over them very well. And if I switch over to dynamic sport mode, then the acceleration is so quick. And not that I use that mode quite a lot, but I think if you do want to have something that's really fast, want to get a very good pickup, this is the one to have. Number three are the five star safety features that this car comes with. Now, all Range Rover vehicles, especially the Velar models, come with the following safety measures that I've listed here. Emergency braking assistance, adaptive cruise control, autonomous emergency, high-speed emergency braking, and in some of the newer models, blind spot assist. I don't have the blind spot assist on these mirrors at the moment, but in a lot of the newer Velar models that are on sale, they will all come with that as standard. So for me, I can't fault the safety features. So you can pretty much be confident when you're driving, especially at high speeds, that you will be safe in case of an accident. The fourth thing I really like about this car is about the long range drive. Now I've taken a lot of road trips that have lasted maximum around six to seven hours of continuous driving. And for me personally, having a long journey like that, you want the ride to be really smooth. The last thing you want from a car is that you feel uncomfortable by sitting down for so long in the same place and not stopping too often. With this one, I don't feel that. And I've taken six to seven hour journeys. I've stopped a couple of times during that, but the entire journey was smooth. I wouldn't be able to take that type of long road trip on maybe some of the older cars that I've had, but the Range Rover Velars especially are a great thing to have for long range road trips. Last but not least, number five is the spacious boot. Now, we all know that the Velar has a very large boot in there, but I just wanted to highlight how large of a space you have. I was moving house recently and I didn't hire a van or a truck to move a lot of my furniture from my rooms or anything like that. I'm talking about seven foot shelves. I'm talking about all of my gym equipments like the portable squat racks, so many things, boxes and boxes of stuff that obviously with multiple trips, I was able to move house that I've lived in for 30 years only using the Range Rover Velar. So I managed to fit everything that I owned in over 10 trips in just this car because of the amount of stuff I was able to fit in this boot. And if you do have a lot of things that you want to transport or you have large families and you want to go on road trips, it's great for packing in suitcases. This is a great thing to have. And that's not specific to just the Velar, of course. There's a lot of cars out there with large boots, but this is something I really wanted to highlight for you guys that has really helped me by having this car. So now moving on to the five things that I still don't like about the car even after four years of use. Number one is the in-control touch display and the infotainment system. I've mentioned this in my previous one year review as well. This is a very slow system. It's not as responsive as I'd like it to be. Sometimes when you press a button or select an option, it takes at least three seconds for it to register and show you that screen. And I think that's just way too slow, especially if you're maybe in a hurry or you want to use your navigation, you want to quickly search for something because you're running late, then it will take some time to do that. And you know, I've sat in BMWs before and they've been so responsive and it is a lot to do with the software that is installed on this. The Land Rover software, I think, is generally slower than a lot of the vehicles I've tried in the past. 
they now have a brand new software system called PV Pro, which is only available on the brand new Range Rover models. So that is across their entire Land Rover range. So the Defender, the Velar, the Range Rover Sport, many of them. But one thing I wish that they would do is allow the people that have the older software to be able to upgrade to the PV Pro system. If you don't know what PV Pro is, then I'll leave a link in the description below. Check it out, it looks so much nicer and I've heard a lot of good things about responsiveness on that. So for me, that's a shame, I can't upgrade, so I'll have to continue living with this problem as long as I have this car. Number two, again on the topic of the screen, there's been some occasions throughout the past four years where I've turned the car on, but the actual main screen has not opened up. There's also been occasions where the screen has just remained black and I was hoping it would turn on whilst I quickly drove off, but it didn't come on, so I had to pull over, stop the car, turn it on again, just to give it a bit of a reset for the screen to come back on. And that's not just it opening up, but that's also it opening up and the screen remaining blank. So there's obviously been a lot of errors in the software. Over the time, I have gone and got software updates from the service centers at Land Rover. That has fixed some of the problems, but for the price of this car, I shouldn't be experiencing problems like this. And that is a real shame. Number three, I wanted to talk about the roof trim here. Now, for some reason, one day it was raining quite heavily, it was very windy, and as I was driving, the roof trim of this car just flew off by itself. So I heard a big noise, something like hit my roof, looked in my rearview mirror, saw this black thing flying at the back onto the road. I pulled over, I went to check, and it was my roof trim. Not sure why the poor quality or the manufacturing style of this roof trim actually did that in that type of weather condition, but I went to Land Rover to ask them to put it back on because I was not at fault they were asking me to pay for it because it costs them a lot of money to order a replacement which is not great so i'm not sure on the quality of some of the parts that they use do they get it quite cheap and why is it flying off when it's raining it shouldn't do that so i'm quite disappointed but i've left it off for now because i'm still waiting to see if i should be able to pay that much money or if they can provide me some sort of discount um, but i'm still waiting to hear back on that so that's point number three Number four, some of you have guys asked me about this before as well, is about the stains that are appearing on the leather seats after many years of usage. Now, especially, you know, if you sit down with your jeans quite often, you will get something like jean stains. And I didn't know that was a real thing until, you know, I've had these cream leather seats. So it might be not too noticeable if you have maybe black leather seats, but if you have a lighter interior, I have realized that they do stain easily. And I've tried to use stain removal kits as well to get rid of those stains, but a lot of them have remained in place. So as you can see here, here's an example of some of the stains. You might have to look a little bit closely, but I did remove some of them, but there's still some stains that you can probably see in this clip. However, it's not too noticeable from far away, but if there was any type of kit that they can provide that allows us to remove this as part of a package when you buy the car, then I think that will just be an ideal thing to have. And again, that might not be specifically to the Velar, but that's one of my experiences that I've seen on all of the Velar seats. Last but not least, number five, if you do own a Land Rover, especially a Range Rover Velar, the servicing, the MOT, the running costs, the maintenance, it is so expensive. Now you'll realize this, that not just the car costs a lot of money. I've realized on a year to year basis, if you don't buy a service plan with them, the amount of costs that you have to do, especially if you need to do any repairs, they will just come out of nowhere. You'll be paying thousands and thousands of pounds potentially each year to be able to make sure this runs exactly how you like it to be. Now, in some cases, they do sometimes offer free upgrades or discounts, but any type of additional work that you want done on it, especially like I mentioned with the roof trim, they were charging around 460 pounds to replace that, which I think is quite expensive for a bit of plastic that they need to clip on, but apparently they need to order it from somewhere and it doesn't come black so they need to charge to repaint it to black and then get the clips and then put it onto the roof which is a bit of a shame but the running costs on this especially if you live in london they have something called a congestion charge for any of those that are watching this from outside the uk you have to pay 15 pounds a day to drive your car into the city so if like myself you do go to london quite often just driving it without any land rover involvement is also a very expensive thing not just the last specific thing, obviously, but it's something to be noted if you don't want to go full electric. So what's next for me? Now, 
this car is quite an expensive car i've spent a lot of money on it i still want to keep this for another couple of years at least and for me i have no problems with it if i can overlook all of those negative points i think you guys can as well what i want to do especially in at least two three years time is to potentially find a car that i can go full electric that's the way the industry is shifting and i've been holding off for now just because i've been waiting for electric cars to increase their range now i do a lot of road trips as well so if i'm going to drive let's say 300 miles i'd want my car to be able to go at least 400 miles quite easily on a single charge now there's not a lot of cars that currently do that without having to spend a ridiculous amount of money but i've had people that have bought electric cars that do 270 miles maximum range and they've gone for a 300 mile journey in normal hours that would have taken me in my car around four hours four and a half hours but it took that family nine hours and there's been news articles about it as well because of the amount of times they had to stop wait for it to recharge and then calculate the times accordingly to when the next charging point is where they have to stop again so there's a lot of additional planning in addition to a lot of charging times so that just increases your time of journeys so until that's ironed out a little bit more with new electric cars coming on the market, I will continue to use my Range Rover Velar. I still think it's one of the most beautiful cars on the road. And for me, I have ultimately no regrets paying the cost that I've been using this car for because I've had some great times with it. Hopefully that was useful for you guys. If there's anything else you guys want to know specifically about the Velar, as usual, drop a comment down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe. I'll do plenty of Velar videos. I'll have a link to my Velar video playlist that I've covered a lot of topics on this car. So you guys should definitely check that out. And I will see you guys next time. Take care.